Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Nestor, and I welcome you once again to our Virus vs. Versus Morning Devotion. I'm wearing a Gap sweater, which means grace and peace. So I say once again to all of you, grace and peace to all of you this pleasant morning of Friday. What I'm going to share to you today is a very simple, uh, very simple exhortation of the Word of God, and I entitled it, Our Prayer Attitude. Have you ever found yourself in the middle of the story in the Bible? Well, for us, for me and my wife, we found ourselves in the middle of the story in relation to the life of King David. 33 years ago, we had this experience of losing our first child. Um, we, she was pregnant and uh, we were cohabiting, to, uh, we were cohabiting and um, that's when she encountered Jesus Christ and to make the long story short, she gave her heart to Jesus and her life was transformed and then she testified to me and by the grace and mercy of God, I followed her footsteps and both of us came to the Lord and in the middle of her pregnancy, we were just months in the Lord, the baby died and we found out it was a stillbirth. And being young in the Lord, like seven or eight months, I was very confused. I really didn't know, you know, what has happened. I, my, my, in my short understanding of the Word of God, I thought that everything is going to be all right. There will no be bumpy roads ahead of us when you accept Jesus Christ. Well, I was wrong. The first several months after we came to know Jesus Christ was our first big, big challenge. And we lost our first baby. And I did not understand. And I remember walking in the street in the Middle East uh, in the Sultanate of Oman. And I was just discovering the voice of God. When I heard the voice of God, I think that was the first time that audibly I heard the voice of God. When he said, go home and read the life of King David with Bathsheba. So I went home. I took the Bible and it led me into 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13 to 25. Here's what it says. Then David confessed to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, Yes, but the Lord has forgiven you, and you won't die for this sin. Nevertheless, because you have shown utter contempt for the Lord by doing this, your child will die. After Nathan returned to his home, the Lord sent a deadly illness to the child of David and Uriah's wife. David begged God to spare the child. He went without food and lay all night on the bare ground. The elders of the household pleaded with him to get up and eat with him, but he refused. Then on the seventh day, the child died. David's advisors were afraid to tell him. He wouldn't listen to reason while the child was ill. They said, what drastic thing will he do when we tell him the child is dead? When David saw them whispering, he realized what had happened. Is the child dead? He asked. Yes, they replied. He is dead. Then David got up from the ground, washed himself, put on lotions, and changed his clothes. He went to the tabernacle and worshipped the Lord. After that, he returned to the palace and was served food and ate. His advisors were amazed. We don't understand you, they told him. While the child was still living, you wept and refused to eat. But now that the child is dead, you've stopped your mourning and, and are eating again, David replied. I fasted and wept while the child was alive. For I said... Perhaps the Lord will be gracious to me and let the child live. But why should I fast when he is dead? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him one day, but he cannot return to me. Then David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and slept with her. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son, and they named him Solomon. The Lord loved the child and sent word through Nathan the prophet that they should name him Jedidiah, which means beloved of the Lord as the Lord has commanded. And through the story of David, when I was reading this, I was also in the middle of pain because I just lost my, my, my first child. I was just asking the Lord, why did you allow this? Why did you not prevent our child? You are our Lord. You said that you're going to be with us and you'll never forsake us. And so many questions was running through my mind. And then this revelation came in my spirit. It was a one-liner. And God said to me, Anything that is birthed out of sin will lead to death. Anything that is birthed out of sin will lead to death. That one short revelation in my spirit taken from the life of King David totally released me from this uh, self-condemnation, from this self-judgmental attitude, and from the condemnation of the enemy as well. And uh, out of that, uh, I was totally released and we were healed 
and uh, my wife came out of the hospital and next thing you know after several months she got pregnant again and came our second child Wilton who is now 32 years old so in our the lesson that I, I, I was I got from the life of David and Bathsheba is first of all is like what I said a while ago that God said anything that is birthed out of sin will lead to death Uh, sin is always associated with death. It may not be physical death, but death of something in your life because God's life does not flow in the area where there is sin. The second one is David prayed and fasted, begged for mercy for his child to be healed. You know, one of the reasons why God allows crisis and agony and testings and tribulations in our life is this. It's not natural for us to pray. It's when we are at the utmost pain and the utmost testing of our life that we learn to pray and pray hard. And David prayed hard. He begged God. He didn't just pray. He begged God. He fasted. He separated himself. Um, you know, he was agonizing in his soul. The Word of God says, David begged God to spare the child. He went without food and lay all night on the bare ground. That's how he was so sincere in asking God to turn his heart towards him. The third one is, God answered David, and God's answer may not be what you expect. And so David was praying and fasting, expecting God to answer by healing his child. Then on the seventh day, the child died, the word of God says. And David's advisor were afraid to tell him. He wouldn't listen to reason when the child was ill. They said, what drastic thing will he do when, he, when we, we, tell, we will tell him that the child is dead? So instead of the child being alive, the child died and uh, David of course understood that the Lord has already answered but you know it was not the answer that David was actually expecting he was expecting so much that God would be gracious because that's what he petitioned but here's what's amazing thing about the attitude of David in the midst that he fell into sin and he confessed his sin and repented and God forgave him David responded to God's verdict instead of reacting Do you know that many times we missed out on the blessings of God and the provisions of God and the wisdom of God is because we easily react to the circumstance we are in or we easily react to what God is telling us rather than responding. And David, in the goodness of his heart, responded to God's verdict when the baby died. David replied, I fasted and wept while the child was alive for I said, perhaps that the Lord will be gracious to me and let the child live. But why should I fast when he is dead? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him one day, but he cannot return to me. You know, he has this understanding that the child is gone. I prayed, I fasted, I begged, I asked God for grace and mercy, and the Lord gave his verdict. And the verdict is, I answered the way I wanted to be, and I'm taking your child home. The same way that God answered my prayer, he said that anything that is birthed out of sin will lead to death. And David responded rather than reacted. And what has happened? The fullness of the grace of God was restored upon David. See, when we know how to respond instead of reacting, we see the hand of God work once again. And in the life of David, the word of God says, well, let me go back. God is in the business of teaching us lessons. And sometimes those lessons are painful process. But because God is not yet finished with us. After we learn our lesson, He gives us another chance. Yes, God is not finished with you, with you, with you, and with me. He who started, He who began a good work in us, will bring it into completion in Christ Jesus, the Word of God says. He will bring it into completion. So we are still in the process of being completed by God. So in the end, this is what it says, Then David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and slept with her. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son, and they named him Solomon. The Lord loved the child and sent word through Nathan, the prophet, that they should name him Jedidiah, which means beloved of the Lord, as the Lord had commanded. And the story of King David through King Solomon continued. So when you pray, make sure that you know how to respond and you also know how to accept the virtue of the Lord. Join us this coming Sunday for our Sunday worship celebration, 9 o'clock in person and 10.30 in broadcast. Check out our website, jilfnj.org or our Facebook, our social media. Uh, and our Facebook is Jesus is Lord Fellowship, Tom's River 
yeah, the same with our YouTube. So once again, God bless you. Have a pleasant weekend. And please be careful out there. Uh, wear your mask, but trust the Lord. Peace in the Lord. God first. Love you all. Bye-bye.